Mmm, -hmm. delicious! I love matzo, lots and lots of matzo, cause it's my favorite food, yum yum! I found pasta is really not so hot if you're in a matzo mood! When I got the lots and lots of matzo, I show my gratitude! That's cause matzo can always hit the spot, so I'm a matzo loving dude! Mix some water with some flour for a treat the family can devour. I can eat it hour after hour cause there's not any fat. It doesn't take too long to bake and it can't be very hard to make. They roll the dough out flat. It's as easy as that. I love matzo, lots and lots of matzo cause it's your favorite food. Yes sir, I found pasta, it's really not so hot. If you're in a matzo mood, when I got to lots and lots of matzo, you show your gratitude. That's cause matzo can always hit the spot. Yeah. You're a matzo loving dude. Try some matzo pancakes, all that's more delicious. Some kooky that's a matzo pie at breakfast. If you've ever wondered what my favorite dish is, scramble up some matzo fry. It's matzo in the morning, matzo in the evening, matzo all throughout the day. Upon inspection, it's pure perfection. So what else is there to say? I love matzo, lots and lots of matzo, cause it's my favorite food. Your favorite food. I found pasta is really not the hot to if you're in a matzo mood. You're in the mood. When I got to lots and lots of matzo, I show my gratitude. To conclude, that's cause matzo can always hit the spot. And I'm a matzo loving dude. So much matzo, good and you just got to, I'm a matzo loving dude. Matzo loving dude. No, darling, it was one chocolate cake and a dozen eggs, not a dozen chocolate cakes and one egg. Oh, oh, and we need a, another container of milk. No, not chocolate milk. No, not chocolate eggs either. Bye-bye. Oh, come on. Hello. Oh, hi, sis. Hey, listen, Barbara, I can't really talk at this moment. I've got to finish this book, and i got to get the house clean for Passover and set the Passover dinner, and I'd really... Oh, Barbara. Oh, I love it. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Abs um, nice shot. Uh, hey. Barbara, could you hold on? Listen, can I call you back? Thank you, bye. What is going on? He's gonna drive me nuts. Charlie, can you please stop bouncing the ball off the side of the house? Okay, Shari, chill. You know what, Charlie, I don't want you playing ball in the street at all. Come here. Okay, anyway, I gotta go down to the playground. It's debate day for the school elections and I gotta make a speech. Uh, what, are you running for office? I'm running for class president. <laughs> wow, good luck. What are you going to say in your speech? Hey, Sherry, they all know me. I'll, I'll tell a few jokes and I'll win the election. Hey, give me the ball. Charlie, you got to do more than just that. And one thing you've got to do is stop bouncing that ball off the side of the house. Sure, sure. Come on, let's go, Drew. You're up. Hello. No, Lamb Chop, we do not need any ice cream. No. You don't have any money for ice cream anyway. No, on, you may not sell the eggs. Right here. Right here. Colfax winds up. And there is the pig. Oh, oh. Oh, gee. Let's get oh. out of here. Uh -oh. Hey, Drew, come on back here. This house is completely empty, really. Oh. Hey, Drew, don't run. The coast is clear. Nobody lives here. Whoa. Whoa. Who are you? Nobody. <laughs> what are you doing here? Having a little baseball pie. Guess I broke your window, huh? I guess so. Yeah, I think I owe you for it. Think so, huh? Yeah, how about uh, 10 cents a week for the rest of my life? Uh, how about uh, howdy neighbor, my name is Robert Guillaume. Howdy neighbor, my name is Robert, you Robert, Robert Guillaume. The? The? Listen, didn't you originally star in Benson? I'm in the reruns, too. Uh, uh, my name is Charlie Horse. Sorry about your window. I really meant it, you know, about paying you off. Oh, I don't want your money. What money do you want? No, oh, I just want to be a good neighbor. Good neighbors invite friends over for barbecues, for parties, for dinner, stuff great, like that. Great, great. What time? Uh, what time do you want me? Oh, 
I thought you were inviting me. Well, I would, but my stove isn't fixed yet. And besides, dessert doesn't look very appetizing. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, Shari is making a big dinner tomorrow night. You want to come to our place? Oh, boy, would I love Hi. to. Thanks for the invite, kid. See you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Glad it wasn't a spitball. And if you liked me, class present. I promise to ask our principal for more computers in the classrooms, more videos in the library. And in conclusion, as president, I'll try and get us more teachers so we can have smaller classes. Yeah, 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 that's all right for the teachers. But what is my opponent going to do for us poor kids? Let me shed a little light on an awful situation That's been happening to kids in every town across the nation The way the grown-ups treat us is anything but cool Our parents keep complaining that our room's a mess They tell us what to do, they tell us how to dress And it's not a whole lot better here at school If I'm elected president, this is what I'll do I'll see to it that grown-ups know that kids have rights, too. Are you sick of being treated like a baby? Yeah! Are you tired of being pushed around? Yeah! Do your mom and dad say you're acting bad? Is it starting to get you down? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Then vote for me, because I guarantee that if you vote for me, the situation's gonna change. I know that may sound strange to you, but everything I say is true. There's nothing that a kid can do. Now I'll make another point while I still have your attention. And the lunchtime cafeteria is what I'm gonna mention. Before each meal they tell us we gotta wash our hands. They want us to eat vegetables until we're green. And there is no dessert unless our plates are clean. Pretty soon we'll have to scrub the pots and pans. They treat us any way they want just because we're small. Sometimes they make us feel that we should just not eat at all. Do you want to put your elbows on the table? Yeah. Should we have our cake and eat it too? Yeah. If you've had enough, then it's time to get tough. Are you ready for something new? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then vote for me because I guarantee that if you vote for me, the situation's gonna change. You've always wanted more. I'm the one you're looking for. There's nothing that a kid can do. Would you rather watch TV than do your homework? Yeah. Do you feel you're gonna flip your lid? Yeah. Do you need a break? How much more can you take? Do you wanna stay up late? Do you want to drive a car? Yeah. Do you want to be the boss? Yeah. Do you want to be a star? Yeah. Do you want it to be fun to be a kid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then vote, vote for me, me vote, because vote, I guarantee vote, that if you vote, vote, vote for me, the situation's vote, gonna change. Vote, and when it's time to vote, of course, you should vote, vote for Charlie Horse. Horse. Yes, vote for me, and then the world will see that there is nothing that Don't get you. Vote for me, and you are all, I mean, all invited to a huge party at my house. Yeah. The party will be tomorrow night with food. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also a show starring my best friend, the great Robert Guillaume. Yeah. That isn't fair. Why not? You're invited, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of acting the part of the matzah. Why don't you be the matzah and I'll look for you? Well, I've never been a matzah before. <clears throat> I don't know how a matzah acts. A matzah doesn't act. It just lays there flat like this. Whoop! <laughs> you see? Oh, I could do that. Whoop! How's this? You are the perfect matzah. Shari! Where is Shari? Right here! Charlie Horse, do you have to slam the door? No, it's already shut. Hey, Shar, are you all set for the great big Seda tomorrow night, huh, huh? Well, 
actually. And I hope you got a lot of food because I have invited. Hold it, Charlie. We are not going to have a Sadie here tomorrow night. Oh, no, 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 don't say that. Oh. What's wrong with what I just said? It's just that I, I, I look forward to that wonderful Seder we always have at home. All oh, that great story that you tell about the Israelites escaping from slavery in Egypt. And those great songs, Die, Die, you know, Die, Die, you know, I love it. Just call me a sentimental fool. You got his phone number? Hang up the phone. Hey, I have good news. Hello. Aunt Barbara has invited us to celebrate Passover at her house. Goodbye, Charlie. Now, look, it is a lot of work to put on a Passover Seder. That's right. Yeah. I have two days, two days to finish writing my book. So we are going to celebrate Passover at Aunt Barbara's. But, uh, Charlie, case closed. Oh, boy. Aunt Barbara's is going to be fun. Oh, we got a problem. What's our problem, Charlie Horse? Well, we invited a whole bunch of people over to Passover dinner. Who did we invite? Robert Guillaume. You invited the Robert Guillaume to our Seder? Yeah. <laughs> and you think that's a problem? <laughs> I also invited the entire fifth grade. Now that's a problem. I had to invite the kids in my class to the Seder because I needed their vote. So then, that is your problem. No, it's ours. Do you know what not having the Seder here means to you, Lanchop? <laughs> of course I know. What? It means you won't get to ask the four questions this year. The whole story of the Seder can't start until the youngest person in the room asks the four questions. And who will be the youngest person at Aunt Barbara's? <gasps> Cousin Sean? That's right. He's two years younger than you. Still? Still. I hate that. Hush, puppy. Mm -hmm. What you've got to lose mm -hmm. is the present you always get for finding the hidden matzah, the Afi Komen. Oh, no, you see, I can always sniff it out because I'm a dog. Exactly. I'm the only dog in this house. <laughs> but you're not the only dog at Aunt Barbara's house. <gasps> Rover. Right. Rover is probably sneaking around right now, sniffing out all the likely hiding places for the Afi Komen. Well, how do you know that? Just call me a great judge of character. What's his number? Enough already. So stick with me because I guarantee that if you stick with me, the situation's gonna change. We'll get things ready on our own. Have a Seda here at home. So stick with me and we'll make Shari see that there is nothing that a kid can't do. The bear, the bear, the bear, the bear with <laughs> the bear with no hair. Oh, who knows? The bear with no hair. Yes. Print. Good old faithful. Rotten title. Try again. Everyone's a critic. Hi, Sherry. Oh, you, oh, oh, you, you got Sherry. Sherry. What is it? Sorry, Sherry, but uh, Lanchop has something on her mind. Huh? Obviously not a lot. What is it, Lanchop? I don't know. Tell you, I was going to nice thought. Hurry up, Lanchop. You know how busy Sherry is. <sighs> we want to have the Seder here. Oh, she's going to cry, I can tell. I am not going to... Oh, no. <laughs> Brave little me. trooper, isn't she? <laughs> hey, come on, you two. I explain. I got too much to do. Hey, Sherry... There's no place like home for a Seder, and we want to do it. But Charlie Sherry, it's just us. It's no big deal. Yeah, just us and the entire classic. Classic spirit of the holiday, isn't that what you were going to say, Hush Puppy? Well, it may have been. <laughs> Frankly, I wasn't listening to me under the do. All right, listen. If you guys are so eager to have the Seder at home. Yeah, we want to. We'll do it. Oh, hot dog! Oh. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry! We are gonna give you the best Seder that the world has ever seen. Oh, really? Oh, just call me a cockeyed optimist.
Can I find him in the yellow pages? Oh, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> this isn't gonna work, Jolly Horse. Shh, shh, shh. It's got to. It's got to. It's got to. We don't even know how to cook. I don't even know how to spell cook. I think cook begins with a K, or is the P silent like in Delaware? I wish you were silent like in Delaware. Read the recipe, hush puppy. Okay, the recipe for matzo ball soup. Start with one cup of matzo meal. I don't think that's going to be enough if you got the whole class coming. No, this isn't going to work, Charlie. Hey, when I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. Uh, Hush puppy, read that recipe. It says separate two eggs. Okay, I'll put one over here and one over here. I think that separate the eggs means separate the egg yellow from the egg white. What's the point? They're just going to get all mushed up together anyhow. And besides, two eggs can't be enough. (laughs) Charlie horse! Charlie! You didn't take the eggs out of the shells! I like my matzo balls crunchy. Well, the next thing the book says is we got to make the matzo meal into balls, and then we have to cook them. How do I cook them? Well, it says you drop them into boiling chicken soup. Oh, oh, now I'm in trouble. I, I don't know how to make a chicken soup, do you? Easy. You boil some water, yeah? And then you put in the vegetables, and then, and then you give it to the chicken. What do you mean you give it to the chicken? Didn't you ask me how to make a chicken soup? Well, I didn't mean a soup for a chicken. I meant a soup made out of a chicken. How do you do that? Everything you said, but you don't give it to the chicken. You put the chicken in the soup. (laughs) The soup will get dirty. Did you ever see a chicken's feet? Yeah, first you clean the chicken, including its feet, and you take off all the feathers, and then you put the chicken in the water with the vegetables, and you make sure that the water is hot. Yes. Or the chicken will catch a cold without its feathers. Hush, puppy. The chicken is dead. The chicken is dead? That's right. Then there's no point in giving him the soup. Ah, I give up. No, no, no. Don't give up yet, Charlie. Let's see how it... Tastes. I'll do it. Huh? No! No! no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh! What are, what are you? Oh, oh, oh my dear! Oh, 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 this is the oh, Charlie no. Horse. We need help. Lower your voice. We need help. I'm telling you that I'll decide when we need help. Oh! What is that white goop on your head? What? Oh. <laughs> Matzo ball. Matzo ball? Well, that's what's going to be when Charlie Horse gets finished with it. I doubt that. Well, since we love matzo so much, yeah, how come we only eat it once a year? No, no, no. People eat matzo all year long. It's just that at Passover, we only eat matzo, no bread. And do you know why? No. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years. Ugh. What? It is mean to make people who are so old into slaves. Well, after hundreds of years of slavery, God sent a man to free the Israelites and lead them out of Egypt. Moses. Moses, how did you know? Same guy who led them out of Egypt last year at Deseda. Here's what happened. Moses went to the evil pharaoh. (laughs) Which is what they called the king of Egypt in those days. (laughs) And Moses got the pharaoh, to free the Israelites. But they had to get out of Egypt fast before pharaoh changed his mind. Yeah, no time to pack their bag. No time to pack their bag. Are you kidding? There was no time to let their bread finish baking. So they had to eat raw bread. No, 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 no. No, it's just that their bread didn't have time to rise, and so it baked flat. And we call it matzah, which is good, because that's exactly what it is. Wow, Wow, yes, yes, yes. Oh, dumb, dumb. How do you do it? How do you season a chicken like that? Oh, it's so simple. You just take a bag like this. You put in a little chicken, and then you put in a little flour, and it's so simple. You just shake the bag like, ooh. Oh. Oh. (laughs) 
Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, what are you making? Kitchen catchatory. And if you can catch them, <laughs> they're in the pot. What do you put in? Oh, it's so simple. First, you put in mushrooms. Then you put in onions. Onions, all. Oh, onions are the main, main ingredient. Then you put in some pepper, a little pepper. But the most important thing yeah. is the onion. Yeah. If you... <laughs> you put the onion in. Oh, yeah. See, just like onions this. Onions make me cry, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves this sauce. Oh, this yeah. Morning. What a great sauce. <laughs> you know the... <laughs> They, they just are so fond of it. You know what it's called? No, what? Dumbs. <laughs> Happy sauce. Oh, dumb. You probably can cook anything. If it's not moving, I can cook it. Oh, speaking of moving, uh, Dom, you know the reason I came over here was to ask you to come and be our guest at our Seder tomorrow night. Me? Yeah. Can I just come as I am or do I have to get Jewish? Oh, no. Everyone in... Anyone is welcome at a Seder. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are certain traditions for a guest, though, you know? I know, I know. You wear one of those little beanies. The beanie is called a yarmulke. You know something? What? I really want to fit in at the Seder. Mm. I want to be the best sadist. That's wrong, isn't it? Doesn't matter. You know, the only thing that I'd like to mention is that quite often, no, not necessarily, you know, but every once in a while, the guests at a Seder... Comes a little early, you know, and helps cook the dinner, only if he wants to, of course. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm, a, I'm a cook. Look, I'm, a, oh, I'm cooking right no now kidding. as we speak. Oh, this a coincidence. Oh. How about meatballs? How about matzo balls? Matzo balls, meatballs, basketballs. If they're round, I can cook them. That's what I was counting on. Oh. <laughs> Listen, kitty, so I can practice for the Seder. This is my moment. I do it every year. Because I'm still the youngest. I'll ask the four questions. Then someone else here will answer them, making the meaning of Passover clear. First, I say... Why is this night different from all other nights of the year? These are the questions we ask now that Passover's here. If on all other nights we eat all types of bread, why on this night do we only eat matzah? And on all other nights we eat all kinds of herbs. Why on this night do we only eat bitter herbs? Oh, such bitter herbs! And on all other nights we don't dip the herbs in salt water. Why on this night do we always dip them twice? And on all other nights we sit tall or relax. But on this night we lean on our backs. Ugh. So why do we do these strange things now that Passover's here? And who's gonna answer these questions I ask every year? I'd answer for you, but that's what a parent should do. And when I grow up, I'll answer for my children too. But for now, I'm still asking. It's always the same thing. Why is this night different from all other nights of the year? <laughs> Done. All right, now all that's left is to print it out. You can do it, old girl. We've been through a lot together. Now just do me one more favor and print. I never liked you anyway. What now? Good heavens. Yes. 
These are for your table. For my... Thank you. Uh, one minute, I'll get a tip. Oh, hold on. That won't be necessary. I just stopped by to see if you needed anything else. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Yes. Oh, well, could I ask you a question? Sure. Who are you? Oh, forgive me. I'm your new neighbor, Robert Guillaume. Robert Guillaume? The? The? You bought the house next door? Yes. I'm so pleased. Welcome. I look forward to inviting you to dinner. You did? I did. Yes, I met your son, Charlie. Uh-huh. Always a rich experience. But I am looking forward to dinner tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Oh, that's perfect. You know it's Passover. Oh, great. Passover is one of my favorite holidays because the food is always... Well, so the kids are going to do the cooking. We could always make it another night. <laughs> now, I have a feeling the kids could come up with something interesting. What do you say, six o'clock? Good. Six o'clock. See you then. See you then. And thank you for the beautiful flowers. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Whoa. Okay, so, Dom, um, you come over to the house tomorrow afternoon, and I'll give you the Passover cookbook. See you all with a matzo ball. I got it made in the shade. <laughs> Catch you later at the Seder. They are so much fun to cater. There is nothing that is greater. First you shop at Alpha Beta. See you later, alligator, at this thing they call the Seder. Waiter. Oh, Charlie, don't slam the door. <laughs> Charlie Horse. Uh-oh. Uh, Charlie Horse. Charlie Horse, come here. Come here, Charlie Horse. It is now time for us to set the Seder table. My goodness, how many places shall we set? Let's see. There's Lamb Chop, Hush Puppy, you and me. That's four, right? Yeah, or shall I set one more place setting just for good luck? Two. Two? Two. Why two? You can't have too much good luck. Charlie, why two? All right. So I invited two friends to the Seder. Two? I know how much you like to have guests at your Seder. Who was the other one? The other one who? The other one who you invited. Which one? The one you didn't tell me about. I didn't tell you about either one. Well, he did. Who did? Robert Guillaume. Robert Guillaume. The when? When you didn't? Well, I told you it was a surprise. Yeah, well, surprise me again. What? No, not what. Who? Who what? Who else did you invite, Dom de... Dom de Louise? They. Why didn't you tell me? I just did. Yeah, beforehand? Oh, I, I didn't want to disturb you. You know, you were working on your look. Yeah, well, now I'm really disturbed. Why? Why? Because I have to help you organize things and do the cooking. Nah, uh nah, uh nah, uh nah. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean, nah, uh nah, uh? What part of nah, uh don't you understand? Charlie, Sherry, a deal is a deal. You agreed that you were not going to get involved because you were working on your book. Now, how's it going? It's fine, fine. It's all done. Oh, yeah. Well, I still have to copy it onto a disc, so then it's not all done. Well, technically, no. You go to your room, and you finish your book, or there'll be no television for a week. <laughs> I think I've been grounded. Come on in! Nothing could be greater than to be a baked potato. Hello. At a Seder. Dom. Yes. Dom de Louise. The, the Dom de Louise. All right, men. Onward and inward. Where is he going? What? What is all this? Alan what are you doing here? Well, frankly, Sherry, I I'm sneaking on your special. What? That's ridiculous. Yes, it is. It is, because I think I should have been invited. Did I not do your Hanukkah special? Yes, you Last did. Last year, I think I did, didn't I? You did. Mm -hmm. Wasn't I fun? You were fun. Wasn't I perky enough? You were Was perky. I warm and fuzzy and cuddly enough for all you? All of that. Furry enough for you? And by the way, I did get an Emmy nomination for that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes. Did you? No. I think not. No. How about the Halloween special? You were good. Was I here? Yes. In person? You played Dracula. Dracula yes. and with my own teeth. Hmm? Good. Was there not enough bite in that for you, Sherry? Huh? Alan. Wasn't I fun on that one? Did I leave my dressing room a mess? Alan, I don't think so. I would have loved to have had you on this special, but there wasn't a right part for you in the script. Oh, wrong, puppet lady. What would you play? I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it now. What are you doing? Nobody plays Alan Thick like, like Alan, Alan Thick. Thick. The role he was born to play. Okay, Alan, Alan Thicke is. You got it. You got Alan it. Alan Thicke. You got the role. I do? You got it. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Yeah. Do I get a tip? Yeah, I'll give you a tip. The groceries go in the kitchen. I know that. Put the meat by the refrigerator, the um, vegetables on the counter, and the fruit on the table. L listen, the cook will show you where. The cook? Dom. You knew Dom was coming. I knew Dom was coming. I didn't... I didn't know Dom was cooking. Oh, he loves to cook. He begged to cook. What could I do? He's a guest in our house. Dom is a great cook. But what are you going to do with all that food? Sherry, someone might drop in. Someone? How about a battalion of Marines? Sh Sherry, it says in the Haggadah that you got to be ready at a Seder to welcome all guests, true? True. <laughs> Oh, sounds like the Marines have landed. Look what you've done! Sorry. You weren't even supposed to be on the show! Oh. I'm an actor, not a delivery person. Figaro P, Figaro Lee, Figaro La, Figaro Fu, Figaro Dum, Figaro P. Ha! Ah, it is. Oh, hey. oh, oh! Well, wait! Needs a little salt. Oh! No, not me, the soup! Oh. John, I am so happy that you're going to be at our Seder. Me too! Yes? I'm, I'm so excited, and I'm dressed for the occasion. Look at this. Oh. Ta-da! Oh, what? A yarmulka. 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 Beanie. Close enough. You know, Charlie Horse said that he wanted me to read from the Passover storybook. It's called a Haggadah. You got a Haggadah? I got to read it. Get it? Got it. <laughs> Good. Except it occurs to me that I am not Jewish and I didn't know if I could. Oh, you don't have to be something to read about it. You mean I can? So it's a. It's perfect. Thanks. Did you ever read about Thanksgiving and turkeys? Oh, yeah, sure. Did you have to be a turkey? No, but I came close a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turkeys I know from. In that case, you're invited to Thanksgiving as well. Did you say Thanksgiving? I did. Oh, Sherry. Oh, dumb. Thanksgiving, I know everything, but Passover, I know nothing. What's to know? What's that on the table? It's a Seder plate. Some call it a Passover tray. Uh huh. A symbol of the season that we now celebrate. The centerpiece for this holiday. One might say. You may have noticed that it includes six indentations made to hold food. It looks just like the one that I use for Antibasto. You see that when the Seder's underway, everything we set out on the tray helps make a point. Helps illustrate. And that's why we include them on the Seder plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate. plate. The Seder plate. And that's why we include them on the Seder plate. A vegetable like parsley is the first thing we must find. But a radish or lettuce will do. We dip it in salt water, which helps us bring to mind the tears that every Hebrew slave knew. The next two places, what are they for? One holds the chazerit, one holds moror. They're bitter herbs. Do you want a taste? Oui. <laughs> it's horseradish! The herbs help show what every Jew felt. The bitterness of slavery itself. As bitter as the herbs they ate. And that's why you include it on the Seder plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate, plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate. plate. The, the bitter herbs are always on the Seder, Seder plate. plate. Next we need a hard-boiled egg roasted in its shell. After that Roasted shank bone to put on the plate as well. Do you know the meaning of the egg and bone? Oh, gee, I don't, I don't, I don't know. They stand for the sacrifices in 
the temple long ago. Sherry, is there one food you like the best? Yeah, one that I like more than the rest. A mixture made from apples and nuts that's called haruset. It represents the mortar that was used to hold the stones together when the Jews were forced to build the pyramids. The haruset helps commemorate. And that's why you include it on the Seder plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate. plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate. plate. We always put haruset on the Seder plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate. plate. The Seder plate. That's everything we need to set a Seder plate. 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 A sad place. A sad place. I said a hady plate, I said a holly plate, I said a hoodie plate, I said a haya, and I'm a heed and I'm a hoya, and I'm a ha, and I'm a ha, and I'm a he, ha, hoo, hey, ha, 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 I think we said enough about the Seder plate. The, the Seder, Seder plate, plate. The Seder plate. The Seder plate. The All right. Can we look for the Afi Coleman now? You know we don't do that until after the meal. Good. <laughs> Let's eat. We start with the matzah. This is the bread of affliction that our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let anyone who is hungry or in need join us at this Seder and share in our food. I think I'll check to see if anybody is out there who's hungry. Oh, uh, excuse me, Charlie. Will one in here do? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Charlie going? Well, we opened the door because on Passover, all visitors are welcome. That's really nice. Let's see if anyone is hungry or needy out there. You know, just in case. Um, all right, if there's anyone out there who wants to come in for a good meal, come on in! Charlie Horse, what is going on? Where are they? Charlie! Oh. 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 Well, what do you know? Another Passover miracle. Well, I would like to welcome you all to our intimate family gathering. Hey, thank you. You're well, Bill. Actually, we are so thrilled to have you participating with us in our Seder. There. Uh, oh, on the head. Oh. No, no, you take one and you pass the others. Good. <laughs> Lamb chop, the four questions. <laughs> Okay. Why is this night different from all other nights? And the fourth question is, how come on this night we are all of us allowed to lean as we eat? You know, lean, whoop, while on all other nights we have to sit up straight. I know that one. That's because in olden times, lamb chop, only free men were allowed to lean back comfortably when they ate. And so we lean back now so we can prove that we're just as free and uh, as important as anyone else. This is me leaning. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> were all those Jews that were slaves in Egypt black? No. Uh -uh. But you guys said they were slaves. Well, not all slaves were black in different times, in different countries. There have been uh, white slaves, Asian slaves, Native American slaves. And the point about slavery is that uh, it's an equal opportunity career. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought all Jews were white. Not all of them. Well, this one is... Not me. I'm gray. I'm Palomino. <laughs> One of the few Palomino Jews. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> and there are many black Jews. The point is that just as blacks were slaves in America over 100 years ago, Jews were slaves in Egypt over 3,000 years ago. Tell us about it. Back in Egypt long ago, 
a wicked pharaoh rule the land. He said, I am the king, and so you must do what I say. He made slaves of all the Jews. They were forced to follow his command. He said, no one else is free to choose. We do things my way. That's when Moses happened along. He knew that being a slave was wrong. And so he said, hey, Pharaoh, listen to me. It's time you set all my people free. But if you don't do anything, God will make bad things start happening. You can stop them, though, if you let my people go. It's no surprise that Pharaoh said, there's no way, I'm not afraid of the things you say. When he looked down into the riverbed, no water flowed, there was blood instead. The first of ten plagues that would come, causing a pandemonium. But Pharaoh still said, no, he wouldn't let the people go. Then there were slimy frogs, yeah. far too many frogs to bet. Next came vermin, mice and rats were everywhere. Then the sky was thick with flies that filled the air. Soon diseases spread, then the cows were dead. Things kept getting worse, Egypt had a curse. Still Pharaoh wouldn't give in. Then boils covered the people's skin. Next hail fell down in giant drops. Then locusts ate the Egyptian crops. And after all this awful stuff, Moses asked, have you had enough? Pharaoh still said no, he wouldn't let the people go. With the ninth plague, darkness covered the land. But there was something much worse on hand. And then the tenth plague hit when the moon was high. The firstborn sons of Egypt would die. Pharaoh said, that's all I can take. He knew he'd made a big mistake. The Jews were freed, and so he finally let the people go. And it's the Jews' historic flight that we all celebrate tonight. God sent ten plagues, and so the Pharaoh let the people go. Moses said he let my people go. What a great story. The suspense is killing me. What what happened next? Ask the kids. Where'd they go? I think we have a little surprise coming. Now, all you out there, I'm going to need your help on this one, and that includes you, okay? First of all, you got to cheer the hero. In this case, it's Moses. So whenever I say Moses, you go whoop, whoop, whoop. Now, let's hear it for Moses. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, and when I talk about that mean old pharaoh, you can go boo. Try it. Boo. And when anything happens that's good, what are you going to do? Yay! And whenever I talk about being a slave, now that is a no-no. And you go, no, no, no. Do you want to be a slave? No, no, no. Okay. Now, it says right here in the Haggadah that you got to imagine that you was back in Egypt. You was back in Egypt. You, in those good old bad old days. Can you imagine that you are a slave? No, no, no. Well, you got to, because it says right here that God did not only free the Jews, he wanted to free everybody forever from being a slave. No, no, no. no. Now, that's very important. Um, shall I read that again? No, no, no. Oh, the good you got it. Okay. <laughs> now, our story picks up after the ten plagues when our hero, Moses, <laughs> said to the mean old pharaoh, no. You're supposed to be a pharaoh, not an un-pharaoh. You forced us Jews to build your city and your pyramids. But God wants my people to be free, said Moses. <laughs> 
gonna let us go, and the king said, absolutely not. That's what he said. And our hero said, okay, but you don't free us. There's gonna be more pesky plagues. And when he heard that, the pharaoh, you know what he said? He said, get out of here. This is the story about Moses Leading his people across the sand He was smarter than anyone suppose he is Nice rhyme, Hush. Thank you. So how about we give this guy a hand? He knew that wicked, mean old pharaoh oh, no! Wanted the Israelites to stay The king could not be trusted Our hero got disgusted And that's when the Israelites heard him say Let's get going Gotta get going the promised lion. Pack up your backpack. Get on your shoes. Time to hit the sign. Farewell, Pharaoh. Ooh. We are out the door. Sorry, dude. We're free at last. We are slaves no more. No more. Freedom's what's in store. And so each of the Israelites packed a very small bag, probably just big enough to hold some unbaked bread. And then they split. The Israelites set out at last with Moses leading, moving fast across the desert. Man, how they did flee. Must have been a couple hundred miles they fled till they came to the seaside, color it red. They stopped and baked their bread by the big red sea. They were hungry. Then Moses, he said, guys, I hate to make a fuss, but right back there is the army of the Pharaoh. They're following us. I know your bread is baking. It hasn't had time to rise. But if we sit around, we'll all go down and that would be unwise. So there they were, the raging Red Sea in front of them and all them Egyptian soldiers back of them. And so Moses, he said, okay, God, time for a miracle. And then Moses, he threw down his rod. Just like that. And there was a flash of lightning. And a clap of thunder. And the Red Sea split into two halves, smack dab down the middle with dry land in between. Yay! Yay! And that's when Moses, whoop, whoop, whoop. he said, let's get going. Gotta get going. To the promised land. Pack up your matzahs. Get on your shoes. Time to hit the sign. Farewell, Egypt. So long, dude. We're crossing the big Red Sea. We're going to a land of milk and honey. Honey will be free. Hey, Pharaoh. <laughs> don't you follow me? So the Israelites took that dry path through the sea and they ran as fast as they could to the other side. Yay! You see, when the Egyptian soldiers got to the sea, they just didn't see just the sea. They saw that dry path in the middle of the sea and they began chasing the Israelites down that dry path. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. But don't you worry, don't you fret the good Lord. He did not forget as soon as the Egyptians were in the middle of the dry path. There was another flash of lightning. <laughs> and another clap of thunder. Oh my Lo and behold, the raging Red Sea was raging again, and it raged all over the Egyptian army. And they, the Egyptians that didn't drown, they turned back and they ran home to their mummies. And then Moses, <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. who was always in a hurry, he said, Let's get going. Gotta get going. going. To the promised land. Load up your camel. Get on your shoes. Time to hit the Zion. Farewell, Pharaoh. Sorry, dude. Hate to eat and run. See you later at the Seder. And before we're done, let's you see Seder's last.
Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, borei pri ha'gofen. Which means, it says, Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. We get grape juice. Here's to Moses. Let's eat oh. to him. <laughs> oh, boy. That was delicious. And now, that's the best matzo ball soup I've ever tasted. Oh, thank you, but I tell you, it could have been better, but Sherry would not let me use the pepperoni. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and now, it is the moment that you have all been waiting for. It is time to look for the, the Affy, Affy Coleman. Yeah! Okay, ready, set, go! <laughs> Once again, I get the gold medal at the Matza Olympics. <laughs> My snifter has sniffed out the Afi Komen, and now I get to sing the Afi Komen song. What is the Afi Komen song? Afi Komen round the mountain when he comes. <laughs> Hold it. I, how do we know that that's the real Afi Komen? Yeah, prove it. Yeah, yeah. Prove, prove it. it. Prove oh, yeah. Now, prove wait a sec. Oh, prove wait a second, prove you guys. Hey, I done this before. I mean, this hound from the pound has been around. I mean, my nose, nose. Would, would you stop that? Dom, where'd you find that piece of matzo? Dom found it under his plate. Right, Hush Puppy? That's right. right. Hush Puppy, that's exactly where I hid it. And now, my dear, it is time for you to claim your prize. Well, Sherry, for my prize, I want you to make me a promise. Uh-oh. I want you to promise that we'll hold a Seder here at this house every year. If I can come, I'll cook. If you're cooking, I'm coming. Well, in that case, I promise. Oh, oh well, I great. Do. Me oh, too. Me too. Oh, yeah. oh, and now... It is time for us to open the door and let in the prophet Elijah. After all the food is gone, don't we like this guy? Yeah, we love him, but he's not much of an eater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, uh, actually, Robert, would you open the door? Oh, I'd be Thank happy. you. Oh, forget it. The guy never comes. Yes, but we hope he will. Because if Elijah arrives, it means that we'll have lasting peace. Well, look who's here. Does Elijah the prophet have long toenails, green eyes, and a mustache? Hmm? Uh, not no. It must be Elijah the cat. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't know you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Charlie. Very nice of you. Um, Shari, uh, why don't you go on upstairs and finish your book? All finished. All I have to do is take the computer disk down to the printer tomorrow. My printer is really broken. You got your entire book on that little disk? Uh-huh. I can't believe that I don't see any words. Can I, can I see it closely? Yeah, take a look. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, uh, oh. Shari, why don't oh. you um go upstairs and make another copy of the disk? I'll do all the dishes. What? Oh, there's so many dishes, and it's all my fault. I invited those kids to dinner, you know. Charlie, I'm proud of you. What did you say? I said, I'm proud of you. Have you been into Bamana Shepherds? <laughs> no, but you, you made a mistake, and you're admitting you made a mistake, and you're trying to do the right thing. Good for you. Uh, uh, you you want to know the truth? Well, of course I do. Well, you see, it was hearing about Moses. What? You know, Moses is such a great leader, and class president has to be a leader, and a leader has to care about other people. That's really nice, Charlie. 
Yeah. So I'm going to tell Melanie that I'm out of the race and she can be class president. Whoa. She is going to love you for that. Yeah, I'm counting on it. What? I'm going to ask her to go with me to the school dance. Really? Yeah, she'll be class president. And if she's my date, I'll look really hot when I run for president of the whole school next year. You did all of this just for a date? Maybe. Yeah, but what about Moses? Let him get his own date. Oh, was that delicious? The oh, best turkey in town. It was what so about that nice. girl? Oh, we had such a good time. Oh, well, the cranberry, the cranberry was so. The Charlie, was what a seder. Great. Thank you. I am Fabulous. so happy to yes. be here. The best seder uh, I've ever hey, Dom, been to. Dom, yeah. I got one matzo ball left here. You want it? Go for it. Oh! No! Why isn't this night different from all other nights? Die, die, Anu. Die, die, Anu. Die, die, Anu means it would have been enough in English. Die, die, Anu. Die, die, Anu. Die, die, Anu. It would have been enough if the Lord had brought us out of Egypt and not punished the Egyptians. Brought us out of Egypt, then it would have been enough. Die, die, Anu. Die, die, Anu. Die, die, Anu. It would have been enough. No. I die, Anu. We are grateful to those who provided the funding for Shari's Passover surprise. The Covenant Foundation, Righteous Persons Foundation, the Lynn and Norman Lear Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and viewers like you. 